You're watching For the Love of Wisdom, a YouTube channel on philosophy, free thought, and critical thinking. In this video, we're going to look at the solutions to the homework from the video called Introducing Conditional Proof. If you haven't already watched that video, I advise you to stop here and go watch that one before continuing. Here we're going to prove a version of the rule of commutation. And so we're going to avoid using commutation in order to prove it. This version of the rule of commutation says that P and Q is materially equivalent to Q and P. Now, as you should remember from the previous video, the way that we prove uh, an equivalence between two different statements is to show that a conditional of one to the other is true and of the other to the first one is true. So first we're going to try to show if P and Q, then Q and P. And then we're going to try to show if Q and P, then P and Q. So on the first line, we start our conditional proof by assuming P and Q. Remember, this is just an assumption. It does not come from any previous premise. We don't even have any. We're just assuming it. And we have this bar on the left to indicate our scope. We then use simplification twice to get P and Q each on a separate line. With P and Q each separate, we can then conjoin them with conjunction to get Q and P. And that finishes this conditional proof for if P, then Q, if P and Q, then Q and P. We can now use the rule of conditional proof to derive this on line 5. P, if P and Q, then Q and P. And now we'll just do the reverse to prove the other side. You can see here that what we're doing now is just like what we did before. We're assuming Q and P this time. And then we're simplifying it to get Q and P on separate lines. We're using conjunction to get P and Q. And then we close off the conditional proof and we derive if Q and P, then P and Q by conditional proof. Now that we've proved the two conditionals that we need, we can conjoin them together with conjunction on line 11. So we get P and, if P and Q, then Q and P, and if Q and P, then P and Q. And once we have them together like that, we can use the rule of material equivalence to derive their equivalence with each other. So from these two conditionals, we get this material equivalence statement. Here we're going to use conditional proof to prove the rule of transposition, which says that if P then Q is equivalent to if not Q, then not P. So we're going to begin by assuming if P then Q. And within the scope of this assumption, we're going to try to prove if not Q, then not P. Well, you notice that what we're trying to prove is itself a conditional. So we're going to prove it through conditional proof. So on our next line, we assume not Q. And here we have two bars because we're two scopes deep with assumptions. Each time we open a new assumption, we create a new scope. So now with not Q here, we can use modus tollens to get not P. And now that gives us if not Q, then not P. We can close off uh, this inner conditional proof, and we get if not Q, then not P by the rule of conditional proof. And now that we have that, we can close off the outer conditional proof to get if P, then Q, then if not Q, then not P, by conditional proof from lines 1 through 4. And now we're going to go in reverse. We're going to start by assuming if not Q, then not P. And since what we want to prove is if P, then Q, and that itself is a conditional, we're going to use conditional proof again. And we're going to make another assumption. This assumption will be P. And it's, notice that it's two scopes deep. And now we're going to try to prove Q. 
We're going to try to prove Q through modus tollens as we did before, but first we have to double negate P to put it in the form that we can use with modus tollens with what we have in line 6. So since the consequent of this conditional is not P, what we need to deny it is not not P. That's what we get through double negation here. And then on line 9, we get not not Q from lines 6 and 8 through modus tollens. This is the denial of not Q. And we want to double negate that to get Q. And now we can close off this inner conditional proof of if P then Q, and we write that on line 11. And we say we got it from conditional proof from lines 7 through 10. And now we can close off the, the outer conditional proof, and we get if not Q, then not P, then if P, then Q, from lines 6 through 11, conditional proof. And now that we have used conditional proof to prove both sides of the equivalence we're going after, we can use conjunction to join them together. And after using conjunction, we can use the rule of material equivalence on that conjunction to get the conclusion that we were going after. So we get if P then Q is equivalent to if not Q, then not P. With this proof, we're going to prove a version of the rule of association. Association says that you can move parentheses around when you have a series of conjunctions or a series of disjunctions. Here we're working with conjunctions. So we're conjoining P and Q and R and on this side and we're doing the same thing on the right side. And the parentheses do not make a difference in the truth value. That's what we're going to show here. But we have parentheses here because the conjunction has to be between two parts. So this is one side of the conjunction, that's one conjunct, and here this conjunction of Q and R is the other conjunct. And likewise over here, P and Q is a, a conjunction, but it's also one of the conjuncts of P and Q and R. So we're going to start by assuming this, then derive this, and once we've done that, we will assume this and try to derive this. So first we assume on line 1, P and Q and R. And now we use simplification twice to get P on one line and Q and R on another line, on line 3. And since Q and R is itself a conjunction, we're going to use simplification on that a couple times. And we get Q on line 4 and we get R on line 5. And now that we have P, Q, and R on separate lines, we can use conjunction a couple times to get the expression on the right-hand side. So first we use conjunction to get P and Q. That's the conjunction, that's the conjunct over here. And then we use conjunction again to get P and Q and R. And now we can close off this conditional proof and we derive if P and Q and R, then P and Q and R. And now we're going to do the other conditional proof. So we start by assuming what we have on the right hand side, the conjunction P and Q and R. And we simplify that to get P and Q we simplify it again to get R. And now we're going to simplify P and Q a couple times. And that gives us P and it gives us Q. And now we can conjoin them to get Q and R. And conjoin them again to get P and Q and R. And we close off that conditional proof and we get P and Q and R, then P and Q and R. Then we use the rule of conjunction to conjoin them together into one big conjunction here. And finally we use the rule of material equivalence to 
derived that they are equivalent to each other. Since each one implies the other, we can infer that they are materially equivalent to each other. We now turn to the last proof I asked you to do is homework in the previous video. This proof has two premises. The first is if P then Q and the second is if R then not Q. And what we want to prove is the denial of the conjunction P and R. Well how are we going to use conditional proof to prove this? Well as it turns out the denial of a conjunction is itself equivalent to a conditional. And we can see this through the application of two rules of replacement. The first is De one of de Morgan's theorems which tells us that the denial of a conjunction is equivalent to the disjunction of the denial of each of the original conjuncts. So the denial of P and Q is equivalent to not P or not Q. So up here what we have the denial of P and R that's equivalent to not P or not R. And then we know through the rule of material implication that a disjunction is equivalent to a conditional. If it's of the form not P or Q, then that would be equivalent to if P then Q. Here our Q is not R. So our if what we have is not P or not R, that's equivalent to if P then not R. So that's what we want to prove, if P then not R. And we do that, first of all, by assuming P as our first assumption. Now we want to prove not R. How can we get not R? Well, we see that R is the antecedent of the conditional in line two. So we could use modus tollens to get not R. As long as we have the denial of the consequent of this, this conditional. Well, the consequent is not Q, so its denial would be not not Q, which is equivalent to Q. And we see we can get Q through modus ponens from line one if we have P, which we do. So we derive Q through modus ponens from lines one and three. And now that we have Q, we can use double negation to put it in the form we can use with modus tollens. Then we use modus tollens to get not R. And that completes this conditional proof. And we can derive if P then not R by conditional proof from lines three through six. And now we just need to transform it into what we're looking for here, the denial of P and R. So first we use material implication to get not P or not R. And then we use De Morgan's theorem to get the denial of P and R. Now don't go away because there's a, another way to use conditional proof to prove this same uh, proof. So we're going to go over that one next. Here we are with the same argument that we just did a proof for. We have the same premises, the same conclusion, but we're going to go about this in a different way. We're still going to use conditional proof but we're not going to try to prove a version of what the conclusion that we're going after. We're going to use conditional proof in a different way. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have two conditionals. And what we want to prove is the denial of their, the conjunction of the two antecedents of those two conditionals. Well, we know through De Morgan's theorem that the denial of the conjunction of two terms is equivalent to the disjunction of the denial of each. So not P and R is equivalent to not P or not R. And that itself is the disjunction of the denial of each of the antecedents of the two conditionals. And that is the kind of conclusion we get from destructive dilemma. In destructive dilemma, we have two conditionals. We deny the consequence of those two conditionals, and we get, well, we don't deny the consequence. We have the disjunction of the denial of their consequence. So we know that 
the consequent of at least one of these conditionals is false. And we can conclude that the denial of at least one of the antecedents is false. And so this is equivalent to this up here. And it looks like we could use a destructive dilemma if we just had a premise that denied the consequence of both of our conditionals. Well, what we have as the consequence of our conditionals are Q and not Q. And we know that one of those must be false. So basically we know that not Q is true or not not Q is true. But we don't have that as a premise. But we know it's true. So what we're going to do is use conditional proof to prove not Q or not not Q. Of course we want to prove that as a conditional that's equivalent to that. So we're going to use material implication once we get a conditional. Well, let's look at material implication. What we want to get is not Q or not not Q. Well, that's basically equivalent to if Q, then not not Q. So why don't we try to prove that? Since we want to get if Q, then not not Q, we begin by assuming Q. And we put our scope indicator to the left of Q. And then we can use double negation right away to get not not Q. And that quickly completes our conditional proof. And so we can use the rule of conditional proof to derive if Q, then not not Q on line 5. And now we just have to transform that into a disjunction using material implication to get not Q or not not Q. And now we're almost ready to do a destructive dilemma. We want to use conjunction to conjoin the two conditionals together to get if P and Q, if P then Q and if R then not Q. And now we're ready to do destructive dilemma. And we get not P or not R. We then use De Morgan's theorem on that to transform it into the what we were looking for, what we were actually trying to prove, which was the denial of P and R. And that ends this proof.